Rioters in Lhasa looted and destroyed stores, set buildings and vehicles on fire. The number of people killed in the unrest is still under dispute. Tibetans say more than 80 lost their lives in clashes with police, but Chinese authorities put that number at around 13. They say the victims were innocent civilians killed by rioters and that police killed four rioters in self-defense. Here's state-run CCTV with Beijing's perspective on what happened. Mr. Chang was rescued from rioters by a Tibetan doctor who risked his own life. Thanks to the doctor, my son and I survived the violence. I've only seen such things in films. They're just barbaric. Now the riots are over and I have to find a chance to thank that doctor. Mr. Chang's son may not be able to join his classmates soon, but schools are opening. Now parents won't let their children go alone. Only two days ago, rioters were at the gates of the Jinbengdang Primary School. No children were harmed as they were under the protection of their teachers, but I'm afraid the feeling of terror may stay in their hearts for a long time. The school playground is noisy once again, and more people appear in the streets. Some shops have reopened, while others need more time to get back into business. My shop has been totally destroyed, but life has to go on. Now I have to clean up the big mess. We all want to reopen our shops as soon as possible. More traffic appear in the streets, especially taxis. Very few taxis dare to come out, but it seems they are all on the street now. The governments are managing to help restore order in the city. We have to guarantee that every citizen lives a stable life here in Lhasa, and we are also working on finding the rioters. Sign of damage from the riots are still on some of the streets, but the people here have started to calm down. Both the government and the public have tried their best to bring these three days of unrest to an end. With the fire put out, Lhasa's sky seems brighter. 2000 CCTV, Lhasa.